Hey guys, we are going to talk about uh, this scam and it's a very interesting scam. I think it is, you know, there are a lot of finger pointing and blaming going on, which is normal. And that's why you have partners, right? Because when shit hits the fan, I would probably say that um, you're going to, hey, it's your fault. No, it's my fault. No, no, it's your fault. This stuff has been really fascinating because typically you wouldn't really see it made public. And the reason you wouldn't make it see public is you yourself, the guy making the video, seems kind of guilty. And that's where we are with this scenario uh, where he's part of this company. This company took pre-orders and they took, what was it, 3.5 million. Now, I don't know if it's USD or Hong Kong dollars, but regardless, it is a lot of money. At first, I was like, whoa, like this is like some huge company. It's it's a medium-sized company, but it is a distributor. Yes, a distributor. So it's slightly a little bit different because obviously a card store can buy so much more uh, product than a individual. So an individual cannot buy that much product. A card store can buy more. So there are card stores in Japan and so on. they are buying a ton, a ton of these products, and it's very interesting. Don't pre-order from people you don't know, that you don't trust. One of these individuals is actually has a criminal record, and so he is probably more likely to commit crime because he has less job opportunities. Also, do not partner with criminals. That should probably be said straight away that if you partner with criminals, it is something where you are going to suffer when they commit the crime and they point their fingers at you, right? They're going to be like, oh, well, it's you. You're the reason that uh, that the company went belly under. Oh, it's you. And I love the, uh, I love the finger pointing. I think the interesting part about it is somebody going to jail because this is a lot of money and they're not exactly in a country that doesn't care. They're in Hong Kong, which is controlled by communist China. Somebody going to jail because they have to send you to jail. That's just how it is, right? So the card bros, um, I don't know if he knows this, but he is as likely. I mean, they're basically just going to send everyone to jail. No, they're going to send everyone to jail because... That's the simple solution. The, I mean, this the solution is really, really un, understandably simple. Okay, we have a bunch of people. We don't really know who's innocent. We just know that the money is gone. The on money is on Rolexes, OnlyFan models, and so on. Okay, who can we put in jail? <laughs> man, they're, they're going to get bit by the government. Man, the government is not going to... like, Especially after being made public. Because this, again, is a Hong Kong Chinese company selling to companies in Japan, South Korea, and Asia, disreputing the, the government, right? Basically saying, oh, how can the government allow them to do this type of stuff and not have punishment? And they're, they're out in Japan buying Rolexes, just living it up, right? There's got to be some type of punishment for these individuals. What does that look like? Um, it's going to be severe. I think it's going to be jail time. I think these guys are going to end up in jail. I think at least some of them will go to jail, if not all of them. And I do, my gut feeling tells me that the, the overall atmosphere of China right now is they got to punish the people. They got to punish people. Money is tight. You can't be doing this. And then you can't be admitting this. And, and I get like why he's trying to do this because he has a YouTube channel and the other two people or the other three people do not have a YouTube channel. So they're like posting on Instagram and whatnot. And it, it seemed like a little bit one-sided, right? When he has a, a, a way to a platform, let's call it a platform, and the other two do not have platforms. Yeah, it seemed a little bit one-sided, but at the same time, is it though? Is it one-sided? Because he's kind of telling you <laughs> the roadmap to uh, what happened, and in the roadmap, it does not seem like he is innocent. He's completely innocent, as many many people have also mentioned. Um, it it just doesn't seem like he is. I mean, I think somebody. I think I think he could easily be putting himself out there and to go to jail, and that's why it's so. Because you never see these videos published. 
because of this fact. Okay. Um, you, you don't see videos like this published because if they are, they actually incriminate yourself as well. You're not complete. You're, you're part of the business. The business did bad. Who do you think owes that money? And even though they're like, oh, you're not part of the business anymore. No, you are part of the business. Legally, you are. You signed those documents and unless they removed you, and even if they removed you, you have responsibility and he knows this because he's flying to Japan to meet these clients and maybe convincing them not to sue him but to sue the other people. That's what I would be doing, right? Because there has to be victims here and the victims have to take action. And I think at this point in time, it's been what? It's been how long since he, it's been over a month since he started making videos? How long these victims are going to wait? You know, like you can travel there and say, hey, things are under control, things... I don't think that's what he's saying. I think he's traveling to those places and saying, oh, I wasn't part of this, uh, sue these people. Oh, I wasn't part of this, sue this, these people. It might work, but then again, it may not. Very fascinating, right? It's, it's fascinating for a few different scenarios. Uh, number one, the amount of money is, is a lot. Uh, even if it's in Hong Kong dollar, that's still a lot of money. Uh, that's more pre-orders than I've ever seen before for one tiny. It's, it's not a big store. That's why I have to tell you guys, it's not a big store. Um, it's a relatively smaller, tiny store. So for them to pull in that amount of pre-orders is really impressive. And in my personal opinion, that's not impressive. They stole the money. Again, don't misconstrue what I'm saying. It's definitely not impressive. They straight up stole the money, right? That's not going to impress me. But it is impressive that they were able to get so much of the money together. And that's kind of the tragedy. You know, he's flying from Hong Kong to Japan to talk to these. I mean, if I'm an owner, I'm like, just what the hell? Like, this is the owner. Like, I'm like, dude, where the F on my cards? Like, I don't need you to fly. It kind of looks the same. <laughs> where the hell are my cards, man? I don't need you to fly out to me. I don't need you to um, do that. I just need you to come, like, you know, give me what I pre or either refund me my money, which is bad enough. Like, people don't understand refunding your money is actually not great because you probably have pre orders from customers, and that's what your pre order is based on. So, when you get refunded money, you can refund your customers, right? But the customers don't want the refund. No one here wants a refund. Like, you understand, everyone here just wants the cards they paid for. It's the same with MetaZoo. Everyone here wants the mother effing cards they paid for like it's really that simple they don't want a refund they don't i mean they if they want a refund they wouldn't have you hold the money for that long right it, it just doesn't make anything any sense to me right you, you cannot hold the money right you cannot hold the money so again, uh, talking about uh, this situation, it's very sad to see in real time. Uh, I think it is quite, um, quite bizarre. It is quite bizarre in terms of why he would film this stuff, right? But he did, and it's interesting to me, <laughs> guys.